Hey guys, it's Emma here. Um, so today's video is going to be an update of our last video that we did um, and just talking about whether boaters um, face discrimination, um, especially during this lockdown. Um, but let's go! So as you can see, we are still moored um, in the same spot as we were in my last video because those are the rules of the lockdown. So in our last video, um, I, we told you that there was a couple living in a house uh, just uh, just a little bit further down from our mooring um, and they were walking with their two dogs um, and their child um, and the child came up to our windows um, and in a normal circumstance we wouldn't have really minded that much, we would have just waved, waved um, but obviously since we just came out of quarantine since we ha just had the coronavirus we didn't really want um, the child near our boat because we didn't want to risk them getting infected um, and we just wanted to ensure the child's safety uh, as also the two dogs that the guy was with um, were jumping up at our windows as well so when his dog and his child come up to our boat that, that means he has to come up to our boat to get his child and dog um, so he's just going near our boat again. So we just want to make it clear that we're not having a problem with somebody walking past our boat. That's absolutely fine. We don't own the towpath, uh, so they can do what they want. Um, we just don't want people coming up to our boat, like looking at it through the windows, especially in this time um, when everybody has social distance. So when we go out to the towns and cities, uh, we have to put masks on, we have to social distance with, with everyone, we have to stay up in queues for shops, um, we have to wash our hands every so often. Um, but when we come back to our boat, people just come next to our boat, um, look through the windows and think it's fine when it isn't because there are elderly, elderly people on boats um, and they're obviously quite stressed in this time um, because they don't really want to go out in the towns too much and then when they come back to their boat from coming from the towns then people are still they're, they're just next to their boat and looking through the windows and not keeping social distancing on the towpath. My mom filled out a um, online form uh, to the police uh, just telling them what happened. So a few days later, um, the guy came back, to, came past our boat again. Um, and again, he had to get next to our boat because his dogs were literally pushing our windows in. So my mom did ask him really politely through the window um, to keep his dog away and to social distance past our boat. Um, because we obviously just did come out, come out quarantine. Um, and he then he uh, got went back to his house, put his dogs in his house and then came back to our boat. Um, to yell at my mom. Um, then his wife came out and started shouting as well. Um, and my mom just tried to make it clear that uh, she just wanted to keep everybody safe um, and try to social distance. Uh, and then the guy started to get um, really intimidating and personal. And then one of the things is that he called my mom a pikey. Um, if you don't know what a pikey is, it's it's a it, the, the term was used for um, like the Irish travellers um, or the uh, Romanian gypsies. Um, it's generally used now as calling somebody that doesn't have a lot of money um, and maybe some, something about them like their boat or their house is a little scruffy. And in fact, he even called our boat scruffy and said that we should move it away from his house. Even though we weren't moored uh, next, to, like in front of his house, we were literally, his house is just down there. Um, and weird more kind of opposite field. Um, so then after that, uh, my mom called 101 and I was on the phone to a police officer. Um, and then the wife came back to the boat uh, again to shout at my mom. Um, and then she was actually on the phone to 101. Uh, so the police even heard her coming back to our boat um, and obviously not social distancing. So in, all so in normal circumstances, we would have just moved and we tried to avoid as much trouble as possible. Um, but obviously in this time we can't really do that um, and this spot is perfect for us at the moment because it's near shops, it's near water, um, it's good internet for my homeschooling um, and that guy just wanted us to move uh, because he thought that we were outside his house when we clearly weren't. Um, we even moved further down uh, so we could literally say that we weren't anywhere near his house. The police did come out to the house and we obviously don't know what was said to them um, but we have an idea that they might have just dealt with that as a neighbouring issue between a boat and a house when it was obviously a more of a social distancing um, issue. Um, so then a few days later after the police talked to them, um, the lady came up to our boat again. Um, my mom didn't really recognise her at first. Uh, she thought it was just somebody that needed help with something. So she popped her head out of the hatchet um, and then the lady started yelling at her saying that we, why haven't we moved? We should have moved um uh because like the police said we were gonna move 
um, which we obviously made clear to the police that we can't move because CRT said we're not allowed to move unless it's absolutely essential and moving because somebody just doesn't want us near their house, which we aren't, um, is not essential. Uh, she then told us that she was near our boat because she wanted to take our registration number because um, and because she wanted to report us to the CRT because we hadn't moved in the 14 days that we were supposed to. And now obviously if this was just normal, she would have been right. Um, but we would have never once, one, we would have never stayed over 14 days if this was normal. Um, and we're allowed to, we're supposed to stay in a spot um, while this whole thing is going on, unless we have to move for food or water. But obviously I, so we get the idea that the police officer um, didn't make it clear to them that this was a social distancing issue um, and that they just needed to stay away uh, from our boat and not talk to us anymore. Um, and obviously either they just ignored that um, or the police officer didn't make that clear to them. Uh, so we phoned 101 again um, just to log it. They said that somebody would contact us in a few days. We feel like that the police aren't dealing with this as a social distancing issue and just as a neighboring issue between a boat and a house. I think it's appropriate for to contact them again um, to tell them to stop. I think that the social distancing issues should be applied um, to both boat, people that live on the boat, um, and people that live in towns and houses. So they do very kindly uh, phone us every couple of days um, to make sure that we're okay um, and if anything else has happened. But they did give us the impression that they weren't going to deal with this as a social distancing issue. I feel like there are some boaters that feel like there are different levels of protection um, for the house people um, to the boat people. We may be a bit stubborn but we don't like being bullied out of a spot for us. Um, but hopefully the CRT will lift up the rules um, for the continuous cruises um, so we can move again um, and I can also do cruising videos um, and I can upload more. It's important that everybody sticks to the rules at the moment. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I do a video and comment on my social medias, my Patreon and my Gmail, thenabrookgirl at gmail.com if you have any suggestions for me and I also have a canal post address if you would like to send me the letters. Um, but yeah, see you later. Bye!